But I want to say thank you, Mayor Coppinger and Superintendent Johnson for that kind introduction. And most importantly, for your steadfast and resolute leadership of our community during such a trying time. I also want to say thank you to the students who graced us with their voices and talents this morning to kick us off. They are inspiring and really the reason why we continue to come together time and time again to do the work of Community 2.0. We have gathered you here today virtually to celebrate Chattanooga 2.0's first report that we released this morning since 2016, the launch of our updated and refined strategic plan, and our renewed commitment to the work that lies ahead. We're here to talk about our future, the future of our community and our economy, and we'll reflect on where we started and also how far we've come. But before I talk about the future, I would be remiss not to acknowledge the difficult and historic present that we're currently navigating. Yesterday was a historic day for our country, and it led me to think about just how much has transpired in our community over the past year and fully recognizing that this community has spent a year navigating crisis together nearly, albeit from a distance. We've dealt with the impacts of a global pandemic, the destruction and trauma of tornadoes that hit our county over Easter weekend last year, and a nationwide reckoning with racial injustice. And then just in recent weeks, we've seen on a national stage just how perilous to our democracy and our community's division is and we also saw an unfathomable milestone in COVID-19, in the COVID-19 pandemic, 400,000 American lives lost, 332 of those in Hamilton County. And so I wanted to take a moment to recognize this time, the stamina and persistence of our community and all of you. And as we heard in the poem that Sydney read earlier, it is moments like these that we really have the opportunity to demonstrate the proof of our worth. And that's what we're here to do today is to renew that commitment to what lies ahead. I'm gonna share my screen with you all so that we can share some slides. As many of you remember, in 2015, our community confronted the fact that we faced a moral and economic imperative to train and credential our residents for the high quality, well-paying jobs that we would be growing in our community over the next decade. We recognized that 80% of them would require some form of post-secondary degree or credential. And Chattanooga 2.0 was born in response to that imperative with the mission of expanding equity and opportunity across Hamilton County at the core of our effort. Today, Chattanooga 2.0 is Hamilton County's cradle through career effort, a partnership across our community. We are not just one organization, but over 150 organizations working together and reimagining what a 21st century education and workforce in Hamilton County looks like. Our effort was built on a long tradition, as the superintendent mentioned, of cross-sector collaboration, bold leadership, and efforts to improve education in this community. But Chattanooga 2.0 has always been different because of our focus on a seamless cradle through career pipeline, the entire experience that a student has, and also because at every turn we have sought to engage our entire community in the development and execution of this plan, beginning with the 100 days of conversation in 2015. And since 2015, Organizations and leaders across our community have been working to implement strategies that are aligned to Chattanooga 2.0's shared vision and that were detailed in our original strategic plan. And we have seen much success along the way. We have attempted to detail some of these big successes and wins across our community in the report that we released this morning. Uh, but the reality is that it is only a fraction of the work and effort that has taken place in our community. We could not begin to capture it all, either in presentation or report, but it has been inspiring to see the collaboration and work that's taken place in our community over the past five years. And the question is, what has our collective effort added up to? We shared with you in our report this morning some of the key milestones across the cradle to career continuum over the past five years. 
The first is that thanks to the leadership of the city of Chattanooga and the Office of Early Learning, as well as dozens of organizations collaborating in the early childhood space, we saw the addition of 600 high quality early learning seats be added to our community by March of last year, greatly reducing the deficit and the pressure that exists for families in our community to find childcare and support for their young learners. As both the mayor and the superintendent mentioned, we formed in our community the Hamilton County Children's Cabinet for the first time bringing together county and city agencies alongside nonprofits to coordinate and align their services to the whole child needs of Hamilton County's children. We have celebrated unprecedented student growth and achievement in our public school system under Superintendent Johnson's leadership. And in 2019, we achieved the Chattanooga 2.0 metric of Hamilton County being recognized as the fastest improving school district in the state of Tennessee. In the past five years, we've also seen an increased focus and engagement on issues related to education in our community. We think one indicator of this is the amazing increase in turnout for school board elections that we saw this past year. We are so encouraged by the focus that our community has placed and the understanding that public education, early childhood and post-secondary are really the engines behind our community's continued growth and success. And it takes our engagement support uh, in order to be successful in those efforts. In post-secondary education, a long-standing core focus for Chattanooga 2.0, completion rates have increased both at Chattanooga State and at UTC. And the overarching headline is that we have more students today who are going to post-secondary, who are persisting in their first couple of years of post-secondary education and are ultimately completing degrees and credentials that will prepare them for those well-paying jobs of the future. And then finally, we saw an increase in the overall educational attainment percentage for our county overall, for adults who live here and work in Hamilton County, meaning that we are getting that much closer to having the skilled and ready workforce that is essential to our economic growth and prosperity. But perhaps one of the biggest successes that we have had over the past five years since Chattanooga 2.0's launch was the collaborative infrastructure that we've built as a community. The relationships that we have forged, the shared responsibility that we've begun to, that we've begun to foster around the success and outcomes of children and students and families, the collaborative infrastructure that the superintendent referred to as we sought to respond to COVID-19. And it was that collaborative infrastructure that was on full display as we spent the past year navigating crisis and leading through a pandemic. As other communities across the country work to figure out how they would work together and solve problems because of the relationships and the infrastructure that we have built here, we were able to move to action. And at every turn, we led in our response to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, across the state and in many instances across the country. And even during such a terrifying hour for our nation and our community, we have found reasons to be hopeful, whether in uh, watching our community come together to deliver millions of meals, if you, as you see there in that picture, uh, or United Way of Greater Chattanooga convening partners to coordinate a widespread response to COVID-19, to bolstering up the childcare sector, you name it. We found reasons to be hopeful. We found innovation and inspiration, and we learned that there were heroes across our community in unexpected places. And we learned so very much along the way this past year. COVID-19 and our response helped us learn about inequities and how they exist in our community and who's been disproportionately impacted by this challenging time. We learned that in some instances, we have systems that will bend and buckle under strain. It's estimated that we could lose as many as 30 to 50% of childcare providers who won't be able to return after the COVID-19 pandemic. We also learned though, that oftentimes what we thought was impossible was really within our reach all the while. And I cannot think of a better example than this community coming together to bridge the digital divide in a way that no other community across the country has been able to do. Something that I know many of us did not think possible before we began this journey this past year. 
And then finally, we learned that we cannot do it alone. Whether in times of crisis or not, we learned and were reminded that we truly are better together, which is at the spirit of Chattanooga 2.0. And as we will look back at 2020 and take stock of the impacts of this pandemic, there are still critical questions to be answered. But we do know that the events of 2020 will continue to impact our work in cradle to career education for years to come and that they have also made the work of Chattanooga 2.0 of our partners seeking to support children, students, and families, for our partners seeking to build an equitable talent pipeline, that our work has become more necessary, more urgent, and more important than ever. And we will use the lessons learned, the challenges and successes to fuel us as we move forward, as we move forward stronger than we were before, as we move forward together towards something better. And so I have shared with you a little bit about where we've been. And again, I point you to our 2021 report to the community to learn more and to celebrate our successes in greater detail. And I've also talked a little bit about where we've been just in this past year, a transformational year for our community and for our work. But now the question is where to next? And with five years of work under our belt, Chattanooga 2.0, we reached an important milestone, an inflection point that allowed us to evaluate what had been working in our community and cradle to career education, where there were opportunities to accelerate what was working, where there were still gaps or things that we needed to figure out, and where we needed to place our focus over the years to come, building on the successes of the past five years. And so at the beginning of last year, we launched a strategic planning process to shape that next phase of work. And 254 people together dedicated over 800 hours to 12 months of strategic planning. And the results of that process are largely contained in the report to the community that we shared with you this morning. What we found through that process is that while there have been so many successes in cradle through career education in our community the past five years, we still face significant challenges in our efforts to build excellent and equitable education and workforce systems in our efforts to guarantee every resident a pathway to the workforce and to a meaningful life in Hamilton County. And across the board, no matter where you look along the cradle through career pipeline, whether it's early childhood, K-12, post-secondary, our systems are not yet producing the outcomes that we want. And they are begging us as a community to come together to reimagine and to transform what education looks like so that we can improve the outcomes and support the success of every child and student in Hamilton County. And what I'd like to do is paint you a landscape or paint a picture a little bit of what the challenges are that we're facing. And again, they're detailed further in the report to the community uh, but wanted to help you understand the state of the challenge today. The first is early childhood offers the greatest return on investment, the greatest dividends when it comes to investment and intervention in education. And yet we only have one in four children in our community who are currently enrolled in an early learning program. We have a deficit in the number of high quality early learning seats that are available in our community. We have barriers to access for many families many working families. And of the 21,000 children under five who are living in poverty in our community, there's limited access to the early learning services for that population specifically. And that is the population who relies on and would benefit from those services the most. And so until we fix those gaps, we will continue to see, a, we will continue to see that a, um, disproportionately small number of students are arriving at kindergarten equipped to be successful and ultimately impacting their long-term success. In early grades, we know that reading proficiently by third grade is the single most important predictor of a student's long-term success in education and career and life. This is especially important for students who are living in poverty. For students who are living in poverty and who are not proficient in reading and language arts by third grade, we know that those students are 13 times less likely to graduate from high school 
and their more affluent and proficient peers. And I wanna be clear here too, that issues of poverty, the issues that our students are facing are not contained to one geography or one demographic. From the urban core of Chattanooga to the north end of Hamilton County, many of our challenges are the same and many students and families are facing them as we speak. And while across our district in K-12 education, graduation rates overall are on the rise, the ultimate goal of our K-12 system is to make sure that its graduates are prepared for their next step, whether it is a two-year or a four-year degree into the workforce or the military or a credentialing program. And right now today, only 37% of our high school seniors are graduating ready for their next step. And as our economy continues to change, and evolve accelerated by COVID-19, ensuring that we are preparing ready graduates will only become more and more critical. And then finally today, 35% of public schools graduates in our community go on to earn a post-secondary degree or credential within six years. We know that COVID-19 will accelerate the trends that we confronted as a community in 2015. We will move further and faster toward higher skilled jobs that require post-secondary degrees or credentials as a result of COVID-19 and its economic impacts. It's estimated that as many as 6,000 jobs in the Chattanooga MSA that required a high school diploma will not return after the pandemic. And we believe that this post-secondary degree or credential given that trend is the ticket to our ultimate indicator of success at Chattanooga 2.0 which is that young adults would successfully transition into our workforce and attain a thriving wage job so that they can live and enjoy and contribute to this wonderful community. And we define a thriving wage as the annual income that's needed for a young adult to live and contribute to our economy here locally, to survive, to save, and to have extra spending that they can give back to our economy, fueling our economic growth and progress overall. But today, only 13.4% of young adults in our community are earning that thriving wage. And we know that addressing this not only takes working backward on the, on the cradle to career pipeline, addressing the challenges that I've already walked through, but also we have to work on both, both sides of this issue. We will work to engage employers and the community overall to make sure that our economy is ready for the graduates that we are preparing and that we have seamless and accessible pathways to the high quality jobs that we will continue to grow in Hamilton County. Across all of these challenges, if we look at them disaggregated across a whole host of different domains, the challenges are different for different demographics and different members of our community. They are impacting certain members of our community more than others. Something that I'll talk more about in just a moment. But over the past 12 months, we use that milestone and that inflection opportunity to analyze the challenges that I've shared with you and that are detailed in our report to the community. We analyze the factors that need to be addressed in order to tackle those challenges. We went back to the original work of Chattanooga 2.0 and reevaluated our vision, our mission, our goals and strategies to answer the question of how we continue to accelerate our work to transform outcomes in education and workforce development and change the odds for children and students and families. And today we are so excited to put forth an updated vision, mission and goals for our effort, as well as a set of key strategies along the cradle to career pipeline. The vision for Chattanooga 2.0's work is that our economy would be thriving and inclusive, that social and economic mobility would be achievable for everyone in our community because children, students and families will have been equipped with the unique resources and supports that they need to reach their full potential, cradle to career. And our mission, the way that we will get there, that we will strive toward that long-term impact and vision is that we will continue to pull partners together and work across silos, breaking down silos to drive collaboration, measurement and alignment of policy and practice to ensure that all children and youth receive a quality education and career opportunities that help them realize their full potential. Chattanooga 2.0 is and has always been about long-term transformation from cradle to career. 
And so we have set forth these five updated bold goals to clearly point to that commitment of transformation from the time that a student uh, is born all the way until attaining that meaningful career and entering into our workforce and economy. And we have updated our goals so that by 2030, we expect and will work to double the rates of kindergarten readiness, third grade reading proficiency, the number of students who are graduating from high school, college and career ready, and the number of students who graduate from Hamilton County Schools and ultimately achieve post-secondary success. We'll work over the next 10 years to reach 80% across all of those metrics. And in doing so, we will double the number of young adults in our community who are earning that thriving wage, enjoying and contributing to a thriving and inclusive economy in Hamilton County. Now, I wanna make these goals a little more tangible. And so for example, if we take kindergarten readiness to reach 80% kindergarten readiness by 2030, that means that we would need to increase the number of students who are arriving at school with the skills and knowledge to be successful by 143 students each year. That's an average of three more kindergartners per school, per elementary school in Hamilton County arriving ready to learn. And to reach our 2030 goal for third grade reading, that's an average of four more students per elementary school across the district who would be reading proficiently by third grade each year over the next decade. And so are these goals bold? Yes, but are they attainable? Absolutely. For this community who has shown time and time again that we know how to work together, that we know how to come together and solve tough challenges, absolutely, they are attainable. And I realized today that in 2030, the third graders that are sitting uh, at home engaged in virtual learning today, they will have just graduated in the year 2030. And I hope that in 2030, I will be standing here or actually in, a, actually in a real room with all of you. I hope to be standing in a real room with all of you and saying that 80% of the students who are in third grade today have just graduated from high school, college and career ready. The question becomes, how do we get there? How do we reach these bold goals? And there are a few tenets that will guide our work moving forward that have been built from the learnings of the past five years and from a year spent navigating crisis. I wanna share those with you quickly. The first is that we will place a rigorous focus on equity at the core of our work as we continue to move forward. We recognize that all of our students, all of our children start in different places relative to the overarching finish line that we've set, and that unique and individualized supports are what enable student success. The analogy that I like to use, uh, and that I've heard others use as well, is that just as a football coach would prescribe unique fitness routines and nutrition plans to individual players, so too we must customize the educational supports that we are providing to students to ensure that we are enabling their success and reaching our overarching goals from cradle to career. The Chattanooga 2.0 Coalition defines e educational equity as intentional supports, resources, and policies that are designed to meet the individual needs of each learner and eliminate disparities in outcomes. And while our definition of equity relates to many different domains, including gender, ability status, economic status, and more, we also recognize that we face an urgent moral and economic imperative to address racial disparities. And so in our 2021 report to the community, you will find our racial equity scorecard and you will find that as you look across the five goals for Chattanooga 2.0, across the board, we have deep and persistent achievement gaps requiring our attention. We cannot reach our overarching goals from cradle to career if we do not close these gaps. And for Chattanooga 2.0, all means all. And we will continue over the coming years to build systems that meet every child where they are, both in and out of school. And we'll be relentlessly committed to that. We know that issues of equity have not always been easy or simple conversations for our community. But we believe that this is our opportunity to resist division, to choose unity, and to build the infrastructure that holds our children and students and our families up and ultimately, ultimately builds a community and economy that works for everyone.
In addition to a rigorous focus on equity, we will place a we will prioritize meeting and addressing the whole child needs of students in Hamilton County. We recognize that 80% of students' time are, is spent outside of school, that there are so many systems that touch and influence a student's success and trajectory, and that it's not enough just to focus on the academic. We have to focus on the social and emotional needs of our students. We have to ensure that their basic physical and mental health needs are met. We have to ensure that they have the social capital and the soft skills in order to be successful as they transition into the workforce. And that will guide our work and our strategies as we move forward. And then finally, we will at every turn apply a systems change lens to our work. As I hope you have heard from me today, the challenges that we continue to face as a community are significant and the goals that we've set are bold. They are not challenges that we will program our way out of, our strategies and interventions must be at scale and they must solve challenges at their root cause so that we have lasting solutions, lasting change to the benefit of children and students, employers, everyone in our community who's relying on this work. Grounded in these principles, we've identified eight updated strategies for our cradle to career efforts. Now I'm not gonna go through all of them today because they are listed in the reports to the community that you received this morning. But I wanted to share just a couple. All of these strategies that we've identified as key levers for change along the cradle to career, cradle to career continuum start with the acknowledgement that we will change systems to do things like expand access and participation in high quality early learning programs. Make sure that everywhere across our cradle to career continuum, we have high quality, culturally competent and culturally representative teachers and leaders impacting our students' lives. The supports that we will provide in post-secondary education will be equitable and sufficient to enable a student's success, meeting their needs both in and out of school. We'll engage employers in the community to remove roadblocks for students, to reduce stress on families, and to advocate for policies and supports for public education and our students. At every step of the way, we will engage with and learn from family and community because the beneficiaries of our work are essential to the decision-making and the implementation behind it. And we will also work to align the public and the nonprofit sectors to the whole child needs of children and youth because no one entity or institution can do this work alone. It will take a village and it will take that whole child approach that we talked about a moment ago. If we do these things, implement the strategies that we've shared with you this morning, then achievement and opportunity gaps like those I showed you a moment ago will be closed in our community. We will reach our bold goals and we will build a thriving economy where children, students, and families have been equipped with the resources that they need to reach their full potential. Now, before I close, I wanna take a second to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have been a part of Chattanooga 2.0 today. All of you who will continue alongside us as we move down this path into the future. And for all of you who have contributed to the report that we, that we released this morning to the plan that we're sharing with you now. Over the coming months, we will be building out updated committees and structures in order to lead this work and implement the first year priorities that we shared with you through our report this morning. And the staff at Chattanooga 2.0 will continue to seek to support partners in implementing these strategies. We'll continue to share data and information and stories of our work with the public. And we encourage you to remember that Chattanooga 2.0 is not any one organization's uh, legacy effort. It doesn't belong to any one organization or any one leader. It is a movement supported by every individual member of this community. And we appreciate your passion and commitment to that. We are all Chattanooga 2.0. And I know that you may be wondering what you can do to help support the implementation of this plan. And we have shared with you in our report, a list of ideas. Uh, but in a nutshell, we encourage you to go to our website to learn how you can get involved. We encourage you to share this report that we've released this morning with your coworkers, your family and your friends to advocate for education, every opportunity that you get, and to where you can and whenever you can be a champion for equity. 
Again, we are all Chattanooga 2.0, working together and united to build a community where everyone can thrive. We are moving forward stronger together. And so I thank you.